today we're going to look at taking a normal TV and using it for a arcade monitor. Right, so here we are, and we see this is a NEC, but again it doesn't really tell us much because the tube could be any brand inside, so that's why we have to get the tube out and also get a few extra readings. Now I'm hoping that this screen isn't, I mean this doesn't look like a, looks like it's got a bit of a curve on it. Okay, so it's not a full flat, real flat screen, so I'm hoping that this, the tube type is correct. If for any reason I can't actually get a suitable chassis, then really this does still make for a really good retro TV for even plugging in the Atari and stuff. So, you know, don't chuck these TVs away, even if you don't want to use them as an arcade monitor. They're really, really good for retro gaming as well. So let's spin this round and see if we can find all the screws to take out hopefully we can get this back of the tv off without too much problems Right, so as you can see as I was taking that off, it was very careful around here because that's the anode cup where all the voltage is. So we certainly don't want to touch that. And if we look in here, I'm not sure we can be able to see, you can see the TV chassis. And um, oh, it's a bit dark in there. But there's some cables in there that we need to remove. Uh, well, before we can take the whole case off, but of course we're not going to do that until we have discharged the monitor. Now there's no metal frame as such inside the monitor, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring, I've got my other monitor out with its big metal cage on it, so we'll bring that one over here and then we'll use that as our earthing cage and uh, then we'll take this anode cap off with the special screwdriver um, to discharge it. So let's do that now. Okay guys, now that it's discharged, I've just taken the anode cap off here obviously. It's now dropped back into the case. So all I'm doing is just finding the uh, relevant ones to unplug, like they've got this one out. Let's see that one, hang on. So I need to unplug uh, this one here and unplug the audio already um, there's another one going to the neck board there so basically all you're doing is just in fact that's going to the neck board that neck board needs to come off so that's the next thing we really need to do because we don't want this neck board this back one here so anything that's connected to that we don't need to worry about. It's only if it's connected back through to the tube. So what I'm going to do is just wiggle this off carefully. They are quite tight and that's why I've got to be careful. There we go. So that all goes back off the chassis which we don't need. You see how we've got this one here still connected. So we need to deal with that. Get that one off. Okay, so we got the connection through into the monitor off. Just one last cable here connecting back to the neck. There's some earth. Now it is actually soldered onto that neck board. So um, what I'll do is I'm just going to cut that. Uh, because if we get another chassis, we'll be able to just reconnect that earth up to the new uh, the new neck board. So I'll do that, and this whole tube and the front end of the TV will come away. So let's do that. Okay, so now we can move this whole front tube. We are now totally separated from the from the back. 
So, if we're not going to keep the TV, then the rest of all that can go. And the rubbish, it's no good to us. Now we need to check out this tube and take some measurements. Right, so the first thing we can see here is the make and model. The thing we need to do is we need to check out the number of pins on the neck here. So if we count those round, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one in the middle there, ten. So it is a ten pin neck board. It's going to be required, the type of chassis that we would need. And now I've got to do a few do a few ohm uh, measurements. So let's do those now. Right, so the measurements that we need to do is this one single cable that's going into the yoke is between the red and the blue is one measure that we need to put the multimeter onto ohms and read the resistance there and then between the yellow and the brown or the yellow and the green depending on what you've got on your particular uh, monitor okay so between the brown and the yellow I am getting exactly 10 ohms so the vertical ohms was 10 between the brown or green it might be in your case and the yellow now we're going to do the horizontal ohms between these two we're getting 1.8 yep so horizontal is 1.8 right so that's it guys we just needed to do those two measurements and the understand the number of pins on the back of the neck and that's it and I did see on eBay that there are a couple of universal chassis uh, mention about the neck though so I think they pretty much assume they're going back onto a same arcade machine but they do ask for the ohm resistance and uh, the figures that I have appear to be within the expected tolerance so I'm hopeful that um, Joey has a from Joe Mac has a chassis which will support the neck with the right number of pins and size and also the right ohmage um, or to at least satisfy the ohmage that we've measured on the neck guys so I'll come back to you soon and let you know if we've got good or bad news and guys I am back and was I successful with Joey yes I was <laughs> so here we go this is apparently a chassis that will uh, be suitable for the for the TV monitor the TV tube so this this is actually a sharp image chassis and actually that's the, the details on the box there so for you guys in the US it is a uh, does come originally from the United States so you might be able to get them locally over in America um, for anyone else, obviously Joey, Joe Mac is a, a local distributor here. Well, and the neck itself that I had um, on the original uh, TV tube, had I counted that there's 10 pins, but it, it's actually got sockets for 12, but two of the pins are missing. Now, he did refer to that as a standard 10 pin uh, neck. Uh, and the readings that we took, he said that was fine, and he had two different chassis to suit it. He had a Wii one, um, that was a low res, normal res, 15K, <coughs> was just standard resolution, <coughs> 110 volt only, um, so that would re require this normal step down transformer, uh, or which is fine because I've got step down transformers in these, these cabs anyway, or there's a sharp image which is the one I ended up getting which is a dual res so I can switch between 15k and uh, 25k and get medium resolution if I wanted to and it's free voltage type so it's, it goes from you know not 90 odd up to 240 volts so it allows you to have any voltage which is flexible a little bit more expensive though but that had the additional of the two resolutions so that's the one I went for guys the smart image and, uh, and as I said, if you do a search on like universal replacement arcade chassis on eBay, you should see 
uh, similar items there. Now, on a couple of those eBay items, they actually talked about the thresholds because you know how we did those measurements. So the vertical ohms, when you measure that, it should be between 6 and 12. This is for the chassis that are online. Check these guys because the chassis may vary in terms of their requirements. But this uh, this was the sort of the, the general one for one of the eBay ones there. Six, 6 ohms to 12 ohms for vertical ohms. And that's the yellow and green or yellow and brown wires. And the horizontal ohms... Uh, between the red and the blue blue wire should be over 1.3 ohms and it says on one of the ads if you can't uh, get that then you can um, take a 5 to 10 watt 1 ohm resistor and add it in series to the circuit to increase the ohms to get it over 1.3 so there's I guess there's ways to also work with monitors that are slightly uh, or tubes that are slightly out of spec but ideally you want one within those ranges so let's have a, a bit of a detailed look at the chassis now. I'll show you the key components on it. Okay guys, so here is the chassis and all the parts on it. So a couple of loose things first. We have the uh, TV earthing strap that goes around the outside. We already have that on our TV tube, so we don't need that. We have a, another earthing wire, which will go through to the back of the neckboard. Neckboard's pretty big, by the way. We've got all the, um, the red bias and the, I mean, the you keno know, color gun um, changes on the neckboard itself. Uh, and we'll need to connect the earth up over to the pin over here. And then of course that, that goes back into the main chassis. And we have uh, the power here. Now that power core will be cut off, of course, and we'll connect that up to our power. That actually power goes round onto the board and connects through around the back here and that actually says AC 90 volts to 260 so that's sort of showing the variable we can't really see that under there but it shows that that's the variable voltage input um, handles all those volts so that, <coughs> that's handy don't have to worry too much about the voltage uh, we have the anode cup and the flyback which is typical of most uh, chassis and here we have a ability to change this over between the two resolutions between 15 and 25k so this is a, a matter of swapping this uh, between this one and this one to get the different I'm not sure if it's hooked up currently in normal or at 25k but I guess we'll soon find out and that's the way we swap it over there and I'm not sure if that also relates to when we actually hook up our uh, vertical horizontal <coughs> connections get the camera here um, you can see normally you just have one set of these to put our, uh, our red blue um, green and yellow or yellow and brown uh, onto here to get the image the right way around but we have two sets so I'm not sure if the other set is relating to the other resolution or not and we need to swap that over as well so we'll soon see if it doesn't work, um, we can swap that. What else we got here? We've got our red, blue RGB and ground and sync signal. So we need to hook that up. And we also have this nice little um, breakout box with all the controls uh, to adjust the monitor and the tube. And this is actually pretty cool because got a fair bit of distance there and I'm thinking I might be able to hook that up I take the uh, marvelous bezel off <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe I can hook that up behind here uh, just on the wood underneath here and have it sitting there and then be able to um, to make the changes but that's a nice little touch we can do the adjustments from the front then um, instead of having to use a mirror or someone else to try and let you know what's going on so guys, that's it. We uh, find a place for that. We'll cut this off and uh, put that up to power. We need to uh, connect to RGB sync and we need to um, get the plugs on here for the orientation. Um, put the anode cap on the back of the tube. Stick the neck board onto the back of the tube and stick the earthing cable on there and connect that. Uh, to the tube and uh, and the degaussing circuit too which is already on the tube needs to come back here I think all right guys so um, let me just show you around the back of the APB machine and I'll let you know what I'm doing there 
right so i have the chassis in okay well let's get this one onto the board first so let's do that we can see that we have these two two rows and one's called m1 and one's called m2 so i think we're just going to try it straight in the m1 and see what happens <laughs> yes i don't have a manual here guys um so we can see the wider gap is to that way so um that will just pop onto there like that okay that one's done let's go through to the oak there all right well the next one we'll do is from the jammer harness and what i'll do is i'll get this nicely threaded around the the back of the cab and along here get that all lined up later okay i need to find this one all right so up at the top and this one is also keyed you can see on the plug that n1 is further away so we look on here that uh, fits perfectly like that okay there we go that one's in okay the next one we're going to do is the degauss so the degauss wire runs off the tube itself it's that black wire that goes around the tube not the earthing cable with a separate degauss circuit here's the uh, connector which i got off my old monitor connection for this is just around the back here and it can go on either way because it's ac so it doesn't really matter so that's fine that's in there now here we go okay the next one is we're going to take this black cable which is from the earthing around the monitor there and that needs to go to the neck board so that will go on to this first one here that's got ground so i'll just put that on right so before we put the neck board on we might as well put the anode cap on so of course is where all the power is there we go so you can see the little clip there so that sort of squeezes into the hole on the back of the tube and that will go into the hole up the top so what we can do is reverse the cup open and remember i have discharged this tube before doing this make sure you do do that okay there we go that's nicely firmly on there okay now we need to get the neck board into the back as you can see it's got a key there so it could only go on one way on the back of the back here that's the key bit so we just need to ease ease this on carefully make sure you're very careful with this neck guys okay i'm gonna actually put this on i'll just put the camera down so i can see what i'm doing and i'm holding the camera at once can putting this on with one hand is going to be difficult so just hang on okay and that's now on and just be careful when you put this on just make sure you wiggle it right in it's always good to check under here make sure there's no gap okay because i noticed that when you just slide it on slides on initially but you do have to sort of wiggle it a little bit and give it a little bit of pressure just to push it on straight push it on firm right well that's got all the main connections set up the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that chassis earth is connected so i'll just get this connected up to the screw here so just hang on a moment i've got the uh earth connected on there i'll have to tidy up this wiring after and i've plugged in the power uh, remember from the original power cable from the chassis so i cut the plug off that and uh, and then got the original plug which i had here to then go into the power coming off from the transformer now remember this sharp image chassis should uh, be variable voltage so it shouldn't mind uh, what voltage i give it so uh, we should be sweet so yeah checking the work we've got rgb in from the board we have power coming in we've got the anode cap going on we've got the neck board on we've got the neck board earth in um, and we have the main yoke wires in here remembering that these may not be right 
might get a reversed screen image. If we do, we can change these around, the red and the blue, the green and the yellow. And also just remember um, the wiring, when I had to wire on the new plug, uh, didn't have a brown, sorry, didn't have a green from the original chassis. So you use the brown one on the oak wire. So brown and green you use interchangeably. Otherwise, yellow, blue and red should be there. Uh, and that is everything hooked up. So really, we should be able to turn it on and get some sort of result. <laughs> so well, let's give it a try. Okay, so turn the fly back up. It's a better picture. <laughs> I can't believe that it's back to front and upside down. It's just Murphy's Law, isn't it? But guys, it works. It works nicely. Um, still need to bring that uh, picture up a little bit more and then we can adjust the controls on the front. So let me do some further adjustments. Right, well I did some more adjustments. There's actually a pin cushion adjustment on here. And by the way guys, having this at the front is awesome to do this adjustments. But I did find that when I got the width to the minimum, I'm still losing a little bit on the side, I think. Um, but I tell you what, this picture looks really nice. Um, I mean, this front screen always looks pretty rubbish anyway, but this actually looks better than it did before, that's for sure. I've still got some brightness and uh, contrast to fiddle around with, I think. But uh, yeah, let me do a little bit of checking. Just see, it might be that other position. You know, we had it on M1, maybe we need to put it in M2. That might give us a little bit more width. Let me go research that up. And of course, we've got to get the screen the right way around. Uh, so I'll go do that now. Right guys, well I found out that that uh, the connector for the oak, uh, we had it in the M1 position and I've swapped it over into the M2 position. Now it should be correct now. And uh, remembering the reason why they have that is, you know, sometimes the monitors are positioned on the floor going up and bouncing off a mirror. So a nice easy way to do that without having to swap the oak wires around to get that same effect. So let's turn it on and see if we are all the right way up and the right way round. Right, well, <laughs> we are the right way up, <laughs> but we're still back to front. So I need to swap the horizontal wires over and, uh, and we're still way out of position. Not sure if we need to readjust now. Uh, I'll give that a try. Uh, maybe this needs to be moved over a bit. It's got quite a lot of overscan. But wow, that picture does look good. This is going to look awesome. So, okay, I need to swap the horizontal yoke wires. See how we go. And there we have it, guys. The red and the blue is swapped over. And now we're all good. So uh, yeah, two ways of doing that. Again, you could take that four pin plug for the yoke wires and cut it down the middle. I have seen that done on a few chassis. Then you can just uh, flip the, uh, the plug on the chassis itself between red and blue to do the horizontal switch. Um, but I thought it'd be easier, just didn't want to sort of stuff up the plug. So I just literally, I mean, I'd got a cut in the wire anyway. So I just uh, changed the red and the, and the blue wires over. And I just did a little bit more adjusting as well. Um, and I'll probably still do, do some, some more fine tuning. But I did find that I'm losing a little bit of the image on the right hand side here. It's showing everything. But it, there's a couple of, well, I think there's one particular screen where the wording is just off to the side. And I have adjusted everything to the maximum in terms of moving the picture to the left and bringing the picture in and the pin cushion controls. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure why I can't quite get it all the way over. But um, look, I can live with it like it is, you can see here. See how that's just cut off at the side? But uh, yeah, look, uh, the, the whole game is completely playable, of course, and uh, I'm not sure how much that's going to really affect things. Other than that, I mean, that looks pretty balanced between the two sides, so um, still can see credit zero up the top. So yeah, guys, I think this is a go. 
So uh, I'm going to get this guy all buttoned up and put away back in the corner and uh, we can finish this session up. And there we have it guys, look at it. <laughs> it's pretty sensational, right? Wow, that looks so, so nice. So I guess guys, um, would I recommend you do this? Would I recommend you find a television and a donor tube and go get a universal chassis to fit one up yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's a it's an awesome way of saving a lot of arcade games that might have dead monitors with and replacing them with just awesome screens. Um, because remember, these TVs are unlikely to have any sort of form of burn-in that the arcade monitors suffer from, and they look as good, if not well, definitely better than the original arcade counterparts in, mo in most situations. So. Yeah, I think um, do it. Hopefully this information in this video helps you to find the right TVs and uh, grab those tubes and put them together with a universal chassis and hopefully you can save some more classic arcade games, guys, with that. And uh, and maybe you've, you know, you're stuck with a game at the moment with horrible burn-in, for example. Well, here's a way around that to, you know, to solve that particular problem. But I tell you what, um, this was tough in the sense that I had to, you know, redo the whole surround because I was changing sizes of monitor. That's a big job. So just be be wary that, you know, doing all that work, it's big if you want to up, upsize your monitor size. But look, once that work is done, it's done, right? And now I can just spend time enjoying this beautiful picture and, uh, and finally playing World Rally where when I knock the cabinet, you know, it doesn't change color it stays the same color uh, no it looks really really good guys so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video you got something out of it and um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed do fix your games use this technique to fix up your games if you can play your games of course and look after yourself you really do look after yourself and i hope to see you in the next video because we've got lots of exciting things coming your way which is why this video is a little bit late but anyway lots of cool content coming up Please subscribe, take care of yourself, ciao for now.